Hey there, today I wanna to talk about some different things that parents like yourself might be worried about that you didn't know that anybody else was even thinking about those things or worried about those same things. And hopefully it will just bring some peace of mind and address a few of the issues. Hi, welcome to the Parenting Bridge Podcast. I'm Dr. Michelle Alden, a licensed professional counselor, parent coach, and family therapist. And I'm here to help you to build a bridge to your best family possible. So I talk to parents um, from all over and hear lots of different concerns. I also um, am kind of a... Um, a nerd, I guess, about obsessing about what are parents worried about? What are they thinking about? Um, and so I do some research on some things like that as well. And I just find it really helpful sometimes to address those things head on that people are worried about. And I can't address all of them, but I want you to know that if you have some big concerns or you're really worried or you need some help, that you can book a, a call with me and I can go over some of the the things that you're you're thinking about or worried about and I can offer some some help and some some suggestions for that. So if you go to um, parentingchallengingkids.com right on the first page you'll see an opportunity to book a call with me and it's a 30 minute call so we have time to to go over a little bit and get to know you a little bit and get some one-on-one -on -one help and then I can also give you some ideas about, you know, what might be the next steps in getting the help that you need. Otherwise, you may just want to listen to, you know, just some of the concerns that other parents have and just not feel so alone in it. Um, one thing that that came across in the different things that I was studying is, is that parents who have a high level of confidence in their own ability to navigate through the world and through different challenges, um, they display this confidence in their children as well. And, um, and then their children have, have those abilities also. And what I'm finding more and more is that parents have really lost a lot of their confidence in what to do when their kids are struggling. And so that's been kind of handed over maybe to other professionals, to teachers, um, maybe counselors, you know, things like that. And, and um, and and I think that there's a, I mean, obviously we need other people in our lives to help us, but as parents, like you have a really critical role in you knowing what to do and how to handle the concerns or the, the problems that come up can really help your kids a lot in just having that confidence. So you have confidence in yourself in your abilities to handle things and your track record of making it through difficult things. And we impart that to our kids, but you also want to build confidence in your kids' abilities to solve problems. And I think that a lot of the parents I work with are very focused on their kids' disabilities, on the things that they can't do or that they're not doing well in. And it, it's just as important to really recognize where your kids have strengths and to help them with that and to help them to develop those strengths. And, and that in that way, we also make the other areas um, where their baby aren't as strong better, right? So that's what we're doing is we're building skills. So, um, and this is, I mean, this is about, I mean, the number one problem that we see across the nation with kids, a, first, a lot of times the very first diagnosis that kids will get is ADHD. And with that, I see most kids have anxiety, um, there's behavior issues and those behavior issues lead to other diagnosis. So um, behaviorally, they become very oppositional. The relationship is, is strained um, usually between adults and kids with ADHD. And, um, and, and then there's also anxiety and depression that goes hand in hand. And remember the younger your kids are, the more depression is gonna show up like anger, frustration, irritability, um, and as kids get older, they it may turn more inward, um, but a lot of times it shows up in their behaviors. And so, um, you know, there's there's a lot of things that we can do to help kids. But just keep in mind, like if your if your child's been diagnosed, um, autism is still you know highly diagnosed, 
but ADHD is often diagnosed with autism as well. So I often talk to parents that have kind of neuro um, diverse kids or kids that are wired differently with these kind of issues. And, um, you know, so I was just thinking, you know, what, you know, what are some of the differences of like what parents do to help their kids and what kind of help, you know, are the, are other people finding? And, and, and this is, you know, interesting because there are, there are people that let go of a lot of the expectations that they have for their kids and they don't they don't set expectations and they're and maybe it's some of it is that because uh, I, I work with a lot of parents that also struggle with anxiety and ADHD and so it kind of is circular in a way like maybe you didn't have that but but parents that are um, are looking for more for their kids a lot a lot of times what really can be helpful is to, is to have those high expectations. Um, also, um, just knowing that there's a lot of importance in connecting with your with kids and, and the kids having connections. So this is a, an, also an area of high concern for a lot of parents because most kids, I don't know if I wanna say most kids, that, that's what comes to my mind because most of the kids that I work with but I don't want to say that this is across the board, but I do know that we have an issue with kids not connecting with real people. And so their connections are all online. Um, they, they may be gaming with friends and those are their friends, but building real connections and having connections in society is kind of getting lost. And you may find that true for yourself as well. So working on socializing and being a part of things is really critical in raising healthy kids. And the other piece of that, I think, is that when we don't have those connections, I think that there's a lot more kind of complaining and maybe blaming rather than helping kids to be responsible for their actions. You know, it's it's easy for a kid if they make a mistake in a game or, you know, it's not real people or whatever, it's like, oh, my bad, you know, and and not really realizing like the damage that happens in real relationships. And so we have to teach that in our homes because it's not always as readily available in our society. And so this is something to, to think about and, and work on no matter what um, diagnosis your kid has. It's, it's just a really valuable part of things. Um, the other thing that, that is critical in helping to raise healthy kids is building daily habits and having routines and schedules. And I think that the, the, the further we move away from the structure of that kids need and we kind of just let kids make all the decisions about what they're gonna eat and when they're gonna go to bed and what they're gonna do and how they're gonna spend their time, we really have lost something and I think it's caused an increase in anxiety in kids and that increase in anxiety leads to a lot of the other behavior problems that we see. So just, you know, I, I am always encouraging parents to have structure and routine and also to have expectations of what you, uh, what you expect to happen, but also good expectations that we, we can have the expectation that our family will continue to grow and get better and healthier and that we can raise kids no matter where they are on whatever spectrum that they can be they can be at their at their level of best and functioning and we may need help deciding what that is um i think that another thing that kids that parents are really worried about is not only the limited life skills that kids have but identity issues and just the isolation and um not really knowing who they are, who they want to be. It's been a long time since I've worked with kids and families where kids um, can talk about what they want to be when they grow up. It's, it's almost like we're losing that in our society and it's very concerning to me because I feel like we're raising kids to not really grow up and to not really take their place in society. And that may come from a generation of parents that feel like they don't really know their place, but there are other parents out there that that, that do know who they are and what they're about. And we, we need to pass that on to our kids that they have a sense of, of who they are in the family, but also a sense of who they, who they are growing to become. It doesn't 
have to be, you know, specialized. They don't have to decide it, you know, in seventh grade exactly what they're going to do, but to have a future context of what they are to what they are becoming. And just the sense of taking your place in society. I think that is almost like a foreign concept for some families. Um, and I think that it's one of the things that keeps our kids in more childish behaviors for longer periods of time. It's, um, and I'm not in a hurry for kids to grow up. And if your kids have a diagnosis like ADHD, there's going to be a lag. Um, and sometimes that lag can be 30% or more, but it also is a moving towards things. And I think sometimes we're so stuck in what is right now and all the problems and all the difficulties that we forget that part of what we're doing is becoming. And in our job as parents is to, to help our kids to become, right? To become adults. We're not raising children to stay children. And I think some of the identity issues that we're facing in our, in our culture, um, are because of that. Like we ha we have kind of lost that sense of like, um, you know, just it's not even has to do with necessarily the roles, but where where do they where are they going to step in to have purpose and meaning in their life? If we're raising kids with, that there is no meaning or purpose in life, I think they're going to have more anxiety and they're going to be more have more challenges because there's nothing to grow up to or to obtain or to reach for. So it's just something to keep in mind. And I like to ask kids, you know, what do you want to be when you grow up? I, I think that if kids are really limited in their scope of different things that they could do, I think it could be really helpful to take them places where they meet other people, where they get to see things. Um, I homeschooled my children when they were very young. And so we did a lot of field trips where we went to the fire department and we went to the police station and they got to see, you know, different professionals in the community. Um, when they got older, we lived in a really small community where there weren't actually a lot of professional people that actually worked in that community. They had to go outside of the community to work. And so for a few years, we did um, a college and career fair so that kids could have a focus outside of just living in this small town and, you know, not not knowing what they wanted to do. So I think just being aware and bringing that into your home, you can do it through reading, you can do it through exp exploration of, you know, information. And don't be afraid to, you know, have your kids get really good at, at something, you know, it's okay. It used to be um, taught, you know, that by the time your kids hit junior high, they needed to know the things that they were really good at so that they had those kind of things, you know, whether it was playing in the band or acting or being in the drama club, um, which is the same as acting. So, <laughs> but, um, well, maybe it's not the same. I don't know. And then, um, or sports or, you know, a certain sport. Um, and, and maybe it's not all about the schoolwork, but maybe it is, you know, and so it's not being so structured in that this is the only thing available, but looking outside of ourselves for that. And um, and giving our kids lots of different experiences, no matter no matter what, like I said, no matter what their diagnosis is, kids really need that. And it's so much better when it comes from you as the parent. In the state that I live in, we have um, skill building um, professionals, providers that can come and do these things with your kids. They're they're kind of like. Um, mentors but they're they're paid and they you don't get as much say as a parent on what is going to happen as I think that you should have and I think that if you have family friends that can take that role and and show your kids some different things you know that they might want to uh, um, obtain or achieve um, that can be really helpful but also just don't underestimate your role as a parent in developing healthy kids and healthy habits and and healthy routines and also just a healthy view, right, of the world. If we are so locked in what is right now and, and as adults, if we're so worried about our the future and, and the struggles that we're having right now, we forget about what what is to become and what, what else there is. Um, it wasn't really that long ago, long ago when I was homeschooling my kids, um, it was a really big deal to 
raise the next generation of professionals, you know, to raise the next generation of kids that might want to even be um, world leaders or, or, you know, community leaders. And I feel like it's something that's kind of slipping. And again, I'm speaking from my experience in the last, you know, 10 years of working with families that are really in the trenches with a lot of difficult situations. And so I know that that may be short-sighted on my side of not seeing what other parents are doing and, and how they're concerned about their kids. But, you know, the other thing that, that came across, it comes across all the time that families are concerned about, that parents are concerned about is just family time and having time together as a family and, and setting those, those times aside. And I mean, ideally it would be great, right? If we could all travel and have that time, but just making sure that you're doing some of those things. That's why I think the routines and the daily habits and the things that become part of your family, like in our family, this is how we celebrate birthdays. In our family, this is what we do at Christmas. And just building some of those almost like rituals, um, really kind of build a rich heritage for your kids. And so, you know, just something to consider and an answer to just kind of the worry about the quality time that you have with your kids. It really is a short amount of time that our kids are in our home. And then it's so much longer that our kids are adults. And so you're laying the groundwork for something that's gonna go on much longer than the 18 years that they're gonna be in their home. Um, the other thing I, I know that parents worry about a lot is, is homework, um, schoolwork, kids, their grades, um, turning things in, not turning things in. Um, and I just, I just want to encourage you that homework may not, might not be the end all for your child, right? And if you're telling your child, like, if you don't do your homework, you're not going to go to college and you're not going to get a good job and all this kind of stuff. Um, I don't know how helpful it really is because that's not necessarily on their mind, right? But if they have goals, if they have things they want to do, then we can help to work with them on what it's gonna to take to achieve those goals. So I like to work on the schoolwork and all of that kind of from a different direction. If you have a child that's on an IEP or extremely, um, you know, just just a lot of problems that you're facing at home, I, I enjoy encouraging parents to let go of the homework battle. It doesn't have to be this way, especially if you're spending hours and hours worrying about that. And I am going to talk more about IEPs and um, which is an individualized education plan and 504s and accommodations that kids can get at school and how to build kind of a healthy learning environment in your home in the next coming few weeks because we're going to be getting in back into the school routine of things. But I just want to let you know that if you're overly stressed about your kids grades and school and all of that like it's it's um we do want kids to enjoy learning and we do want to create an environment of growing and learning and um but if it's become this huge battle then it's something that you can you know again you can set up a call and talk to me about about that and i can walk you through some of that individually as well on those 30 minute calls so um you know, those are just some of the things that I came across that parents are, are extremely worried about um, that I see kind of across the nation. Um, and some of those are also included in like just lack of motivation in kids. And I think that, you know, in the things that we talked about, um, that makes sense to me. If we don't have a focus on what we're becoming, then of course there's gonna be a lack of motivation. And I think, you know, parents see this lack of motivation in, in homework and in chores especially. And I love to talk to parents about ideas on how to build more motivation and um, to increase their their sense of, of responsibility and all of that. I also wanted to let you know today that this will be the last podcast that we will have on the Parenting Bridge podcast. We will continue to do these videos on the YouTube channel, Parenting Challenging Kids. So the podcast, The Parenting Bridge, is this is the last video and the last um, podcast recording that you'll get. We're going to just focus on our YouTube channel. I enjoy it personally much more because I'm able to, I just feel more connected to my YouTube channel audience. Um, I'm able to be on camera. It just feels a little bit more interactive. I can see the comments. If 
um, when people leave them. And so please go to Parenting Challenging Kids and um, subscribe to that YouTube channel. And you can look at all the old videos. We have everything that's been on the podcast is on that YouTube channel as well. And please share it with your friends, with other parents, um, whoever is, you know, you think would be interested. And if you have ideas for, you know, oh gosh, I wish Michelle would talk about this, or I wish that we could cover this. You can leave those in the comments. I read all the comments. I often respond to those. Um, I mean, I, I don't think I've ever not responded to the comments. Um, and I would be happy to have that dialogue with you. And I just feel like the YouTube channel is a much better um, vehicle for us to be able to do that and to communicate. I want to also remind you again that um, it would, if you have any concerns or questions or just a situation where you're like, I can't believe that this happened this week, or what do I do about this, whether you've um, worked with me before or not, go to parentingchallengingkids.com and click on booking um, a 30-minute coaching session with me, and we can go from there. And that you can also share with anybody you know that might be struggling with their um their kids that have any of these labels that we've talked about, if you have kids that are highly anxious, um, yeah, just feel free to to interact in the um, in these ways. I I value that and I value being able to help you in, in any way that I can. So thank you for listening today. And um, again, leave your comments in the in the comments comment se section and feel free to subscribe to that YouTube channel, Parenting Challenging Kids. Thanks for listening to The Parenting Bridge. Do you want to learn more about building a bridge to better behaviors? Pick up a copy of Dr. Michelle Alden's new book, Parenting Emotionally Distressed Kids. Or for more resources, you can click on the link for Healthy Foundations. If you would like to leave a comment or a question for Dr. Alden, there's a link in the notes. We'll see you next time. And remember, things can always get better. Thank you.